these drugs, which I repeat are our best, strongest pain medications, should be used much more than they are for patients in pain. I think this begins in the 1980s when groups of pain doctors, pain specialists in American medicine, we began to feel that we were treating pain very poorly. And they were right. We did a very bad job of treating pain. Uh, they began to make the argument that we could do a lot better job very cheaply because we had tools to treat pain, but we were afraid to use them. And these tools were narcotic painkillers. The 90s were the decade when we saw an enormous expansion in pharmaceutical sales reps. The nature of pharmaceutical marketing change before it had been older guys, almost all of them guys in gray suits, who really studied the, 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 the stuff and really knew the pills. Those older sales reps kind of faded away as the 90s went on and they began to hire more and more and more. And the idea was you develop a blockbuster drug, then you hire scads of new sales reps to go hawk them to doctors. We doctors were wrong in thinking that opioids can't be used long term. They can be and they should be. And we began to be very demanding and to doctors that, that they fix us and that the, the tools to fix us were um, these narcotic painkillers. Doctors began to feel all these pressures, uh, an epidemic of pain, we're not treating pain right, all these sales reps, all these threats of lawsuit and then patients on top of that. And it slowly, then not so slowly, uh, doctors began to change their minds and began to very, very aggressively uh, uh, prescribe these pills. The first attempts were really to, to convince doctors that there was a new day dawning, that science now knew that, that there was um, no real addictive risk to these pills when they were used to treat pain. There's no question that our best, strongest pain medicines are the opioids, but these are the same drugs that have a reputation for causing addiction and other terrible things. Now, in fact, the rate of addiction amongst pain patients who are treated by doctors is much less than 1%. So as the 90s progress, you begin to see uh, bizarre uh, expressions of this. You go in for a routine surgery, yet the pain for that surgery is going to last two, maybe three days you were getting 30 days worth of pills. The pills were available to kids in the house. People use them for two, three days. They don't need them after that. And they, then 27 days worth of pills lingers around the house for the next uh, two or three years to be, to be abused. In 1991, about 76 million prescriptions were given out. By 2013, that had tripled to 207 million. Um, so uh, doctors are handing this out. <laughs> and we were told to do so because we wanted to treat pain.